when the three of us, Nate and Blake and I got together, it just was like, um, we just started playing and we just hit it off. We just had a groove, we had a sound already. And then uh, when we threw Rick into the mix, then it was just like, next level, here we go. Let's take off. Let's ride the boxcar, you know? <laughs> So in Boxcar we have Nate Gannon on lead guitar, Rick Bruner on drums, and Russ Sackett on bass. And Eric Pollard's producing the album, and uh, doing the recording work and engineering is Tom Fabchance. Everyone lives in Duluth in Boxcar, so it's a four-piece band, and uh, the guys are amazing musicians. I'm incredibly fortunate to be playing music with these guys. Like you can see it when we play how we're all just like in another world or something, you know? And we're all just feeling it and you feel it hard. That's why I play with these guys. Actually, they're all just a little quirky, myself included. And I think that's why it all works. And time will know. On drums is uh, Rick Bruner. I'm jamming on my coffee cup right now. Uh, he's a Kansas City guy. He's a terrific drummer. Uh, very versed in jazz and very talented, but he's also a songwriter. And he's uh, written and recorded and produced. He's got like two albums. Uh, so incredible talent. Right, Nate Dog. Uh, my name's Nate Gannon. I play guitar in Boxcar. And we're here to record. And I'm just glad to be part of it. Nate's fire. Fucking bitch. The most open, real person I've ever known in my life. And a hell of a guitar player, too. Yeah. I just get to show up to listen to these guys play great music and just get to shred with it. It's fucking killer. He is a special human being says totally what comes into his head at any, any time. Hey fuckers, pipe down. The actual Unabomber on my arm. <laughs> and never holds back on guitar. Beautiful to watch and uh, really fun to play with. And Russ Sackett, I have a tremendous amount of respect and love for that man. He is uh, so versed in so many different instruments and uh, he's probably the person that I've learned the most from musically. It's funny, this group has kind of brought out a style of playing in me that I didn't really have before. I've learned to figure out what it is and then learning to figure out how to play it and then having mastering it and fitting it into your vocabulary. You know, it's fun, it's, it's great, it's good, it's, I love it. So we got Blake, he wrote all the tunes and sings all the tunes. He's fucking killer. That guy's a fucking asshole. Yeah. No, it's... <laughs> when the pain falls down, remember yeah. we tried to work on that? And then we were going to extend it out further? Just want to let yeah, you know. I'll direct it as we go. Thanks for the heads up though. Yeah, yeah. I'll be looking for it now. His work ethic is top notch. He wants to do his best, you know, all the things you want in somebody who is fronting a project and writing. And he's very focused, he's very like business oriented, which you don't come across a lot in music, so it's great to get that. He keeps coming up with tunes. Every tune he comes up with is a killer song. I'm so green when it comes to music. And I, I just base almost everything I do off emotion. He's just writing who he is. And that's what I love about it. No pretension. His words and his singing come across in a very original way, and I really appreciate that. If I recall, it was you who said goodbye. But this is my song. You know I tried. 
to just fall into a, like an emotional space in order for it to really happen. And then once it starts building, then it sort of snowball effects. And then the funnest process, of course, is writing the song and completing a song, yeah. He's the boxcar sound. He is the heart of boxcar. I mean, it's about him and what he does in his own unique way, and it's really cool. He's a ghost. I'm we're here because we're recording our debut album. I'm excited to see what the next couple of days, how everything's going to take shape, uh, how we round everything out once we get all the uh, rhythm tracks done and put the icing on the cake, so to speak. You got nature surrounding you. It's actually a house, not a studio. It's a house with lots of beds. It's beautiful, beautiful cabin, beautiful lake, and you know, nice high ceiling in the main room, and plenty of little areas to put amps and isolate and stuff. You know, this is kind of ideal. When he does it the first time, Bill will. All right, you're the boss. The songs were there, and we've been playing out, and so it was time to do it. We wanted to do it in a location that was just a place that everyone could kind of stay at, and uh, still close to home, and. That's why we're here. Make music. Take me to a cheap hotel. Super good time. Just chilling and hanging and playing. The ultimate weekend, really. First night, we <laughs> took the pontoon out at midnight, and there was this perfect mist over the water. The stars were in full bloom, and uh, we ended up putting on Pink Floyd's animals. Um, I'm sure we woke up the entire lake. But um, that experience, like, it was one of my favorite parts of, of this entire uh, recording. Wood is one of the best materials for a recording space. It's giant, complete logs. Not only is it the ultimate recording material, it's the ultimate version of that. So Eric, I've known for a long time. I know his entire body of work and I'm, I'm a huge fan. Uh, and he's a tremendous producer. It seems real effortless right now in the studio for all of us, but to get to this point, I mean, we, I pushed hard. I felt a little burnt out last night. Yeah, I was surprised that we made it as late as we did and started as early as we did. Because I felt like we accomplished so much in the first day. And then the second day was pushed even harder. But I can't pretend that I didn't know. It's been really a great experience working with him. To get a different sense of how you know it can sound and just be open to that. I couldn't have asked for a better situation. They want to do what's best for the tunes, and uh, the collaborative process has been really great. They want to make a good record, and so that makes my job super easy. And you are gone. That was not bad, though. No, no, we're keeping that. Got to punch in that first. That first little bit. Okay. Yeah, let's just yeah. do it one more time. One guitar sound, not two guitar sounds. One guitar sound. Gotcha. Yeah. There's got to be 20 guitars in there, or more. Guitars do make a lot of difference. It's a pretty damn good tone right there. I brought two acoustics, two seagulls, the telly. He's got that Nashville telly with the three pickups. It's Dan Electro. It's not even made out of wood. Um, I got that Grateful Dead guitar I won. It's like a 335 style. I brought the banjo, he's got a mando. We got Russ's bass. We got Eric's acoustic Gibson. We got Blake's acoustic Martin and his acoustic Ibanez that we left out by the fire. It's under my feet, baby. The grass is growing. Yes, it's time to move on. It's time to get going. That was a great rendition. That's still fun. You know what I mean?
I love this band a lot. We don't really put a lot of pressure on ourselves and we just let things happen naturally and that's one of my favorite things about this band. The sound of the album, I mean, it's very like a vintage country vibe mixed in with a, kind of like a, a J.J. Kale sort of a feel, rhythmically. It's one of those that I would put on in a car on a long drive. It's more about the feel, more about the energy. It's not so much like this exact little musical composition or whatever, you know. There's no ego with these guys. There's not a lot of egos or any of the, maybe it's we're just getting older, but it just seems to work. I think we're all looking at it in a way like it's not set in stone. We're coming at it with a like a loose attack, like a fresh-minded approach. I prefer a much more hands-on approach. So me as an arranger producer, um, feelings can get hurt uh, sometimes uh, when you're working with friends. Because sometimes friends, they want you to work on the project, but they don't necessarily want you to work on the project. time Blake take more time coming in okay yeah right. so like let the let it let the groove kind of develop a little bit but I, I was fine coming in acoustically yeah yeah okay yeah you're oh, great yeah. coming in acoustically okay. I feel that it pays off to have some fresh ears and some different opinions to come in and give us some ideas to, to try and things to change up and oh, I just swallowed a bug you can eat any insect with six legs or less it's a source of protein, it won't kill you. Anything with any more than that, legs like spiders, centipedes and shit, don't eat those, man. Ick. There's a place stuck in my head. Knows one day I'll be dead. So I search the truth. And I love these guys, they're awesome. We're all the same. We want to make good music and we want to have fun and we want to make people feel good. So when we're playing a gig, you see people's feet tapping or they're doing this, I know we're on point. And that's the best part of music to me, is when you are in a room with other people making music, you lose yourself. You're just in the sonic space. And that is probably the biggest reason why I play music is to, to get to that, that spot. I look for those moments where you just feel life right in your heart. And especially when it's involving other people doing their creative thing, it, uh, it just supercharges that feeling of, yeah, here we are, we're doing something we love. This is the best it can get, you know. Well, I'm slipping out the back door from the church last Sunday. I ain't gonna miss on time.